welcome to Stampscaping 101. We're going to try some recollections. Foil cardstock paper. It's the rainbow holographic. It's the holographic foil. 25 pack, 65 pound sheets here. Um, this is some sort of inexpensive foil. All right. Um, one pack of these cost less than five dollars. I bought them at my local Michael's uh, store. Um, it was like buy one get one fifty percent off. So, you know, with tax, you know, you're talking about roughly about four dollars a pack here for something like this. Twenty five sheets of full size pieces. It's not too bad. Okay. Um, now let me do a quick comparison to the foil that I have been using. Um, as far as rainbow holographic. I believe this is the chrome coat one. It's been repackaged by Tonic Studios under the mirror card hollow waves. And it's called, I don't know, something else on a couple different websites out there. If this is the, the chrome coat rainbow holographic, that was, you know, chrome coat's been um, out of business for years now. So um, the sites that I've seen this said that it sold out. And it said that in the Tonic Studios as well. So, all right. So, long story short, this paper right here is a lot more, oh, I would say dynamic in terms of the uh, the saturation, the surface sheen, and whatnot. If you do a little comparison here, that looks pretty cool to me. But you can definitely see the uh, the texture of this one, and you can see it how it's just definitely not as extreme. Okay. Now, I don't necessarily say, okay, this one's better and this one's worse, okay? <laughs> I can tell this one's just definitely che uh, cheaper, though. But that look, I mean, it looks pretty good for, you know, my purposes. I've been trying to knock down some of the intensity of this one just because the, the paper can be so incredibly loud, all right? Which I kind of like in the way that I've been using it. So I see myself using this... Um, Recollections brand, uh, whatever they're, I don't know who they're repackaging um, or whatnot, but uh, I don't know. I think this is, I don't know, I think it's pretty cool. It, it, it seems more pastel to me, you know, doesn't it? Um, but I mean, equally as cool, you know, in terms of that surface quality. I don't know how, what uh, thing or tech, you know, they use to, to make that type of paper, but I think it's really cool. Okay, so my question is, and I don't really have any question about whether or not this will take the ink um, at this point in time. I believe it will, because I've been practicing on some of the other foil from the same company, brand, or whatever, and it works just fine. So, Let's do a test here just to make sure. I don't know if this foil is going to be the same as like the, the colored ones. Could possibly be a little bit different. There could be some sort of surface um, coating on this that makes it holographic like that. All right, so let's test this out. Let's just do a really quick scene here. Um, I'm going to use the old mill here, and I thought I would do kind of an Aurora Borealis here. That was one of my first tests on my, you know, my other chrome coat paper. And uh, let's see how this one goes. Okay, so this is, I don't know, this is a used um, cotton ball. I might have to, uh, you know, go for a new one. Sometimes I have to use them for a little bit uh, to kind of get a little bit crusty on the surface like that, but let's see how this goes. All right, now this uh, foil, I mean, it doesn't seem too much different to me upon first uh, applications here. Too much different than The other foils or the chrome coat one that I've been using lately. I'm not usually doing this sort of degree of kind of streaking like this with pressure. Um, I've been mostly kind of tapping it like so. Okay, so one of the things that I noticed though, um, on this paper I believe, I believe this, I'm guessing, I don't know. This is just my first test so I'm just kind of speaking out loud, but I, I think the surface 
seems to be more porous, if that's possible. I don't know, foils, you wouldn't think they're too porous at all, but I think it's a little bit more porous than the intense chrome coat one, okay? And it could be that that chrome coat one's really super smooth, so there could be um, kind of a glossy coating over the top of that. This one seems a little bit more, I don't know, it's, if, if there's such a thing as like a matte foil, or closer to matte than glossy, I, I would, I don't know. I thought that this is glossy, but it's just not quite as um, glossy as the uh, the other. Okay, I, I need to take someone up on their uh, recommendation. They said they used a post-it note underneath there so they can just kind of move that around and supposed to grabbing the card all the time. I thought, oh my god, that's, that's like brilliant. It's not something I wouldn't have thought about um, before. Anyways, I don't have any post-it notes right here, but every time I kind of touch the edge to kind of spin it, it um, um, I remove ink, you know, with my, uh, my fingers here. But see, when I add that ink there, it, it's real, it's pretty sticky. It, uh, you know, it doesn't move around as easy as I would have thought. Maybe, I, maybe it's because I just don't have it built up here yet. Okay, so adding this in. They call this um, those kind of hanging curtains uh, in the Northern Lights. Um, well, curtains, you know. So uh, I'm going to try to apply some of this ink in here and uh, kind of streak the curtains up into the area. I'm kind of developing by developing a little them a little bit by um, kind of retaining some areas in here that are just you know straight um, card surface. Okay. But I'll try to also do a little bit of ink removal as well. I don't know how much it'll you know, remove. I'm using the uh, the quick drying brilliant sinks, and um, on that other surface, they don't like I said, they don't dry so fast, so you're really able to manipulate them. I I I, I guess I'm going to be able to manipulate them on here too. But like I said, if I just touch my finger down there, um, I'm removing ink, so I guess that bodes well for the removal. Uh, whatever, process, technique. Okay, now if you want to get um, some ink kind of built up a little bit more, what you do is you kind of use a little bit of a lighter pressure so that you're kind of building up little beads of ink on the surface. Um, sometimes when you're tapping like this, you, know, you really want to ink it up. And then sometimes when you're tapping like this, sometimes you end up removing ink. So you got to kind of get the feel of it, you know, get the feel of how much ink's on your pad. Um, how much ink to kind of tap on there. And here's the thing though. This isn't like your normal coloring, okay? In terms of it being, you know, kind of a more permanent application, at least at this stage in the game, with what we're, what we're doing here, as far as it being on the foil, and in this kind of thicker style of ink, you know, meaning pigment inks, okay? They're almost like, pigment inks are kind of like um, paint, practically. Okay, so we have that down. Let me try something here. I'm going to try something with, I, I did this the other day. I grabbed a paintbrush, okay? And let's see here. I'm going to write a line here so I don't go below this when I'm doing this video so I don't work off screen here but let me try to kind of streak up some uh, some lines into this you know kind of these curtains This looks really sloppy, okay? And I don't like it. 
but it's not the end of the process. It's all kind of kind of part of the uh, the process here. In fact, it looks you know like really ugly. In fact, okay. So let's grab a paper towel here now, or let me try actually. Let me try cotton ball here, and let me just go in here and start to clean up some of this a little bit. You kind of have to kind of wipe it, and the part where you're kind of wiping, then you change to a kind of a clean area. Otherwise, you're going to be wiping here and then applying it over there. Okay, I like this. So we have this right here. It's kind of looking a little curtainy, right? It's a little bit harsh, though, wouldn't you say? <laughs> it's still, it's, it's real blobby. What you do is you kind of add, and then you subtract, and you add, you know? And I don't know, maybe subtract again. You just kind of do it until you get kind of the finish um, you want. I mean, we can also stamp our scene out, too image and then um, you know go from there as well and I find that after I do those streaking things um, like that I find usually find the next application of ink on here kind of to be the one that I don't know Kind of brings it together, I guess. So it's kind of what is it? Add, subtract, and add. I don't know. I I, I did a couple little preliminary things too, of going back in there and kind of removing a little bit of ink a couple times. But you know, the, you know, with the paintbrush, that was like the first big kind of subtractive um, process. All right. So that yeah, this is this is coming together. Boy, it sure does look ugly until you kind of, you know what I mean? Get it out, worked out. I mean, if you don't get it here either, you know, just go back in and oops. Um, you know, just keep working it. So this right here, I'm kind of muting some of those um, things. There's my fingerprints right here. I need that post-it note. The post-it note is kind of, you know, you put it on this side and how it's sticking out there so you don't have to grab your paper. Is that smart? Whoever mentioned that to me to do that, uh, thank you. Always appreciate advice. I'd say that looks okay. All right, so. Um, yeah, I need my, here we go. This is what I'm looking for. I need my ink. Oh, here, here's a used post-it note I can use. This is what I'm talking about. You go like this, right? And now you can just kind of move this around accordingly. Technology, stamping tech, right? Okay, here. Um, I'm going to take this Rollins pet. Here's what I'm finding I really need to do once in a while. You need to kind of scrape. No, well, I don't have it too much. Uh, yeah. I thought I, had, I might have had some cotton ball, um, I don't know, fibers on there. I think there's a bunch in my white in my white one though. All right. I 
Sorry about re-inking right now. I should do this pre-video, but this is a pretty fast scene that we're, uh, we're working on right here. So, um, it's come about reasonably fast. Okay, old mill. Old mill large, I should say. Okay. I didn't heat set. Uh, maybe I should have. I don't know. I don't know if I really need to. I, I, I could just heat set it after all this, you know, if I choose to um, do some other types of uh, effects on here that would require me to heat set. If it doesn't require me to heat set, I would probably just let it um, air dry. And on this paper, I'd imagine it would air dry pretty well overnight. Um, as far as the brilliant sinks go, okay, remember the brilliant sinks are kind of designed to dry on less than porous surfaces such as you know like matte papers or something like that okay all right pretty good pretty good impression on that paper like i said i, I think this paper or foil um, is a little bit more porous than than most let's take a look and see right here okay yeah, not too bad in terms of um, the impression uh, quality. Maybe a tree in the foreground, or maybe just go for some reeds like this. <laughs> Where I'm stamping into the. Uh, the wet ink, it does that uh, removal kind of process. It kind of removes ink as opposed to transferring it. I don't know, it kind of adds and subtracts in the same impression, actually. So yeah, it has a pretty good look to that. So, okay, let's see. So there are those reeds in there. I'm stepping wet into wet, right? Because we have that black in the background. So it kind of removes a little bit. So. I think that's a good look. You get the uh, the positive and negative, you know, off of there. It would have been okay to add a little white in here just so that's not right on the uh, uh, the mill. But I think that looks fine though. Okay, so that is that. <clears throat> Let's hit it with some uh, bleed proof white. This in here I think would look pretty cool if, you know, if we added a little bit more ink up there or if it was like a, um, whatever you know, a slimline card, you know, when it went up here and make this all dark and then do a reverse quote stamp, you know, impression into it. I think that would look really cool. Maybe some kind of statement on uh, color or something like that, that type of quote. Okay, so let's just give it a little bit of extra texture. I, I think the paper looks pretty good, you know, and I don't know, you, you can't, you really can't beat the price, okay, that, that's 25 sheets for like $4, okay, 25 sheets is 100 of this size card, so 100 quarter size panel, you know, quarter sheet, you know, standard card size sheets for $4, that's like as I don't know the same price as some like just card stocks you know but here you have this pretty dynamic one with all these different colors in it right okay so let's hit this with some uh, bleed proof white let's say it's snowing or something like that I think that's when isn't that when the uh, northern lights come out anyway in the winter time All right, I need more paint on here. I have a, a new video out on uh, how to splatter paint. I didn't think I would have to do that, but you know, it it 
there's a, there's plenty of uh, variation that you can have on this paint. It, it can be pretty thick or it can be thinner, you know. But you don't want it like too thick otherwise. And in your brush, you know, I mean, that, that matters to a degree. I think I might make, might have mine too thick, actually. I should watch my video. It's giving me a real thin spray. Here, let's thin this out. You want it like a like a cheap syrup or something like that. Or like a, you know, like you've thinned out a little Elmer's, Elmer's glue or something like that. Maybe that's it, you know. Like a thin Elmer's glue. Or like mass market syrup, not like real maple syrup. So I don't know. You know, maybe it maybe the viscosity changes too. You know, depending on you know the temperature of your you know room there or something like that. Okay, this is much thinner. Now what I'd recommend is you just kind of spray it on the side here. You know, just to kind of get a gist of it and whatnot. Okay. It's easier when you spray onto a um, like a dark piece of paper, so you can see. I'm getting like a fine mist. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder what. Huh. Maybe my toothbrush changed. I don't know. Okay, so, anyways, it's a pretty uniform mist around here show you that up close. All right. That's not a piece of that. It's like a, a piece of a, uh, like dried, dried paint there. There we go. That was, that was kind of distracting no matter even at that small little detail. All right. You can see it down here. See that texture? Look at that color though. It's not too bad, huh? That paper, I, the thing that, the thing that this paper's really great for, and this is what I think about all media, okay, um, when, when, when this paper is, I mean, that's readily available, when something is at, like, Michael's, and it's relatively cheap, you know, I mean, that's good for all of us, right? I don't want to use like media that's like so kind of specialized. I'm using the brilliance pads here, but you can use other types of pads. Um, as long as all heat set on here, you know, so I don't know, like maybe like a VersaFine or something like that might work. Um, stays on, whatnot. Most people, you know, have stays on um, inks. Okay, so I'm just adding some variation here in size um, in terms of uh, you know, some star sizes. All right. And if this is snow, you just kind of draw these little balls, you know, falling, little snowballs in front of your objects, too. If they're stars, you just kind of leave them up in the sky, these little dots. You can make some of these dots a little bit larger, too, because we have such a busy background. Okay, so, I mean, if, you know, I mean, you be the judge of it. This could be done, I think, really, you know, for an interesting look on something like um, silver paper. Because I think this composition looks pretty good, just, you know, when, I, when it's reflecting nothing but silver back to me, like from the angle that I'm looking at it right now, it's just silver. But then, you know, you get that different type of glow like that. So let me see if I can show you just silver. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get... You know, some angles there's, you know, it's kind of minimal color, but that's not too bad, huh? 
See, it doesn't it? It seems like a little bit more pastel-ish to me. It's the colors aren't as hot as let's see, you know, this one right here. You know, you can see that that's like extreme. This one's a little bit more. I don't know. It's more chill. It's more kind of mellow. You know. Now, had we not had that other paper, then this would be like, oh my god, that's so explosive, right? So it's kind of all relative, but you get all the colors of the rainbow in there, so you still have that kind of spirit of, um, you know, a lot of variation in here. Um, but that's always a good thing to, you know, to have on a piece. Uh, the more variation and, uh, oh, I don't know, range in hue, intensity, you know, all that fun stuff. Um, it just potentially increases the overall richness of a given surface, okay? All right, here's a little bit of glue. I come to start doing it like this, otherwise I get kind of a You know, a bit of a blob squeezing it out of that dispenser onto the paper. Here and here and I don't know. I'm just doing these all random little bits of glue here. So good news. Um, we have viable surface to work with in terms of our rainbow holographic paper. You walk, or not walk, you drive over to your local <laughs> Michaels, right? And uh, pick up a, pick up a pack, pick up a pack of the, uh, The jewel tone foil, if you like any of the. Uh, I'm trying to see where I added that glue. Yeah, the uh, the the colored packs of uh, foil are really fun to use too. All right, so here's a couple of crystals up there too. If you see those ones? There's a couple right there. See that? So those change, and there's two right here. You can see where they're kind of. Know, shining, and then there's one right there. Oh, they make good compliments to the, uh, you know, the color, don't you think? The rainbow. All right, so that's a pretty quick card. Um, I don't know. Twenty, a twenty-minute card. You know, if I were to do this, just straightforward. You know, the thing is, is getting kind of this background going, and getting it kind of to, into the spirit you want, but. You know, when you stamp all this stuff over the top of it, it, you know, the imagery, what you have going on in the background, it becomes kind of less important. You know, it's not not important, but it's kind of less important because it doesn't stand out as much. So, look at that. I can still come into this like this. Kind of add these kind of streaks in here. That's kind of nice, actually. It's kind of fun. Kind of adding to those current things. You know, like that. And if you don't like it, you just go back over it. And, you know, go back in there again. That one looks a little bit harsh out there on its own, doesn't it? Kind of sweet next to it. So that is that. And we can heat set this or just let it dry on its own. I, I'm just going to let it air dry. And it should be dry in about a day or so. But if you need to get out, get it out in a hurry, just heat set it. Kind of try not to 
target it in any one area for too long. Kind of do it overall, I think. Uh, and it just, I think it comes out um, a little bit better. Okay, so anyways, hope you enjoyed the scene. Thanks for watching. If you like these videos, please hit the like button. Like, share, and subscribe. Or, and if you want to get um, some instant notifications of when I post a new video, just hit that little bell um, icon next to the subscribe button. Okay, we'll see you on the next video.